Hey, what's up all you composers out there? My name is Jeremy Lidecker. I'm Francisco Rios. And we are coming at you from the Film Scoring Academy of Europe headquarters in Sofia, Bulgaria. We are the composers behind a video you may have seen. It's called Filming the Online Program. And today we're just going to take a few minutes and dissect that video for you. We're going to talk about our collaborative process, how we bounce sessions back and forth, how we feed off of each other's ideas, and just take you underneath the hood of this project. Okay, so let's unpack this a little bit. The way that this particular project started is that I laid out a foundation and kind of a vision for the track. So what I'm going to play for you now is the original foundation that I wrote and sent to him before his voice was laid in. Okay, so there's a couple of things I want to highlight for you before we play what Fran then layered in. First, one of the important things for me of this track was this acoustic bass sound. I wanted it to be really big, right in your face, and I wanted it to happen periodically through the track, and those are the kind of pressure points of the track. Here's the sample. You'll see that that happens four times throughout this track. I didn't just use that sound out of the box. I compressed it a lot. You can probably hear that. It sounds right in your face. I use additive EQ to get more of the highs into the sound. So that's really kind of the, the benchmarks throughout this track. Next, there's this piano ostinato. So compositionally speaking, that's all one cycle. This is all one cell that happens four different times. The Metropolis bases actually punctuate that cell that repeats.
Finally, the last little piece of this puzzle that I gave to Fran was I said that there needed to be some sort of ticking clock. Super simple, it's just like two different gawk blocks, two different wood blocks, click, clock. Lots of reverb, but I knew that this guy would get what I was looking for. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what you hear is basically a combination of reverb, delay, EQ, distortion. Raise your hand if you love distortion. I do love distortion. Uh, com, com filtering, synthesis, of course, uh, sample modeling, a lot of techniques. Uh, if I start talking about techniques and instruments I use, it's going to be a really long video. The short point here would be a lot of exploration and textures in the high end and in the low end. So let's just go back to the very beginning and talk about what happened right off the bat. First of all, as you can see in the video, this starts with a blur and you entering the room, actually the room that we are sitting in right now, the camera's flying through the air and there's this whole like mysterious atmosphere that we want the user to enter. That was very important is that you enter the room and suddenly you are in the vibe. So there are things that Fran did right at the beginning to help you like get into the room and just establish the overall space. One of my main goals for this was to combine the artificial low end coming from synths with the natural low end coming from the basses. Same thing with the high end. The artificial high end coming from the noise uh, and natural high end coming from, from the basses. Okay, so let's just listen to everything together for the first you know, 10 seconds or so. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in here. One of my favorites was this low bass thing that you put in. One of the things that I learned a lot about collaborating with Fran on this is that working with sound designers or people that approach sound differently than somebody like myself, who's kind of a classic orchestral conductor type, they think about expanding the frequency range much more than we might. We think like, basses all the way up to piccolo. Hmm. But they think like sub bass down to 20 hertz, all the way up to all these little artifacts up to yeah, 15K. 15. There's all sorts of things, little, they sound like little bugs running around, hmm. little trinkets, things happening way up at the top end of the track. I really hope you're using uh, really good headphones or really good speakers, because otherwise that low end, uh, you might not hear it. Speaking more technically about this uh, specific low end, It's a sine wave with uh, distortion and compression and EQ. 
it's a very different low end that you get from uh, sawtooth. The, this gets very technical, but if you are a bit more advanced, I would suggest try to get low end from both and see which one works better. Uh, the low end coming from a sine wave is, is super clean. You can keep it by itself and you can add a sawtooth on top of that to, to mess around with the rest of the harmonic content. And you get really nice results just like this. I also like some of the things that you're doing harmonically in here with some of these. Well, you've got kalimba with some other, yeah. some other um, synths. Let's just listen to some of this stuff. You also recorded a wine glass, if I recall. I did, yeah. <laughs> So that little thing right there started as a wine glass. If you have a very well-trained ear, you can hear come filtering on that, on that wine. It's uh, that trick with, you can do with delays, very short repetitions that makes the sound very metallic. It's a very particular sound. Once you hear it, you are able to recognize it. Okay, so there's another frame in here that we really wanted to hit, and it's this shot of the cameras. So you have this little thing in here called New Serum Cow. Here's what it is. Huh. I'm a huge fan of serum. Uh, sawtooths and reverbs that allow you to move the size to change the pitch. This is basically it. It's a sawtooth with a few unisons, filters, you can hear the filters, and what is given the pitch movement is the size of the reverb inside Serum. Try that with the reverb, reverb in Serum and with Black Hole, I believe. Uh, a few other reverbs allow you that, but that's what you get as a result. And on top of that, we have some really aggressive, almost sounded like electric guitars. And so that was something, again, I really liked, and so I chose to go in on that. I wanted in on that little party. So I actually added just some cello staccatos. And then processed them with, we have a bass amp on there, some overdrive, some strategic EQing. So the two of those sound like this. I think one little thing worth mentioning here is how to make um, a boring sound interesting. That arpeggio is very repetitive. It's the same thing, but what is changing is the filter and the resonance, and that's what's giving movement to the sound. That's a very common technique that we use as sound designers or composers to, to give variation to the sound. Okay, so now in terms of punctuating the track, we are going back to those four bass hits. Those are the chapters of this track. We're now reaching the second one. All of that you just heard was the first kind of moment. Now, the second punctuation, which is here. And the celli come in with the thirds. First of all, you've got that low hit. It's a, um, an intense hit, but not an aggressive one. Uh, we could talk about kicks and hits all day long. How, there are thousands of options to go here. We were trying to keep it uh, clean, um, not as aggressive as it could get. And on top of that, I think my main goal towards uh, this section, and mainly um, pro probably the whole track, was to 
play with textures and moments. Give each moment something to say, so to speak. Uh, and I think this hit with the rest of the elements is giving those little moments to your ears. I'm also seeing here that you have another noise tail serving as glue for these two sections. Yes. It's really, really subtle. It's, it's just there to, to give some, some texture and some glue. That uh, noise actually is created by taking a low sine wave and putting noise and then distorting them together and compressing them. So you force the noise to interact with the low uh, sine wave. So the lower it goes, the slower it becomes. It goes <laughs> You remove the low end and you get this type of tails with the noise. So your impact after this second chapter now includes all of this. That's kind of the material that introduces us. Maybe you can talk us through some of that stuff. Like, what is this? That is a sample from Splice. <laughs> no, it's my voice. Uh, I love using my voice. We all have voices. Try to record it and try to play around with filters and with samplers. It's becoming way easier nowadays to use your voice as an instrument. And this is what it is basically. Uh, my voice with uh, a stutter filter to give it more rhythm. And play around with the pitch. Always play around with the pitch to keep it interesting for your ear. And some more harmonic things going on. Okay, so a few things. You have this kind of going around in yeah. a circle, right? There's also a lot of artifacts in the top end, and you're doing this keeping that idea going. One, uh, one of the main elements in this texture is the watery type of sound, and it's coming from, from a phaser. Um, the arpeggio, I believe, it was with serum, the, the low, let's say the mid-high one. Uh, it's a sine wave with filters and with a phaser that is giving like that wah wah sound. And the high end is coming from uh, little bells here and there. And of course, movement left and right. Keep your ear entertained. So now chapter three, the clock ticks. Mm. This is when we really kick it into high gear with regards to this whole clock ticking thing. Underneath all of that, here's some of the material that Fran's got going on. Another one where I said, I want to play. I'm trying to join that. <laughs> so I just doubled that in strings. Did some things, compression, overdrive, EQing, layered a whole bunch of samples that I like, spaced them out, and then combined my strings with his sample. Again, I wouldn't have had that idea if you wouldn't have thrown in that duck -a -duck -a -duck -a -duck -a -duck, yeah. that little thing that maybe was maybe a passing thought for you. I don't know how much of a thing that was for you, <laughs> but when I heard it, I thought that's that's like one of the things that can really help chapter three be a moment. And you know, that's one of the main uh, things I, I reinforced with this exercise is to trust, if you're collaborating with someone, to trust their taste to trust each other in terms of taste, in terms of decisions, because sometimes, you know, we're musicians, we're creative people, we have egos and we have an idea, we spend hours creating something and we're like, oh, this is my perfect idea, this is, this is it. 
then you send that idea. Maybe the other person says like, you know what? I don't like it too much. Maybe I do like it, but I like the beginning of it. Let's not be afraid of trusting each other and, and giving time and space to explore more that idea. I think it, the, the, the overall and the result is going to impress you. Okay, so let's just hear the impact into chapter three with everything going on and you can hear how we took this up a notch. You've got some cool things going on down here. Number one was that voice, and then number two is that juk 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 yeah. juk 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 thing. So the vocal line. You're connecting harmony. You're connecting one harmony to the next harmony. Yeah, that's my voice again. Just my voice in the sampler, with uh, reverb and of course um, a little bit of pitch to give more sense of. A human touch in, inside the track, and that little um, high-end thing. It, it was me trying to emulate how stretching uh, plastic would sound. Click, 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 click. Okay, that's just a super cool sound. Yeah, I loved it too when I when I. Wait, so how did you create it? What is it? It's serum. It's a filter. I'm using a macro to move a few things here and there: the envelopes, the filter. I believe it's also a phaser when I'm moving there to achieve this sound. That is like a, sounds like you're stretching something. Clack 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 yeah. clack clack clack. And it actually works perfectly in combination with the vocal thing. Really strategically done. Listen to the entire thing. Yeah, cool. So now we're into the last little chapter here. The last statement of the bases. We didn't need to one up chapter three. Chapter four, we've, we've hit the apex, now we're kind of coming back down. So let's just listen to where we're going. Okay, so now really kind of the featured thing that we're doing together through chapter four. We chose to make it a little bit light, but focus on one kind of idea. He has a lead doing all sorts of crazy stuff, and then I jumped in on it and did a whole bunch of string octaves. So the lead is this. What I added on to his synth was a whole bunch of string octaves and a whole bunch of different libraries panned all over the place that are doing their own thing and then suddenly they, at the very end of their whole statement, they come together and do one unison ascend. Sounds like this. You can understand why I decided to do that full unison focus di -a -di -a, up through the, um, through the harmonics there because the last shot is rising above this keyboard, this desk. So it just made sense to make you feel like you've lifted up until the image goes out. Just listen to that in context.
So there are a few other subtle things. You had that wah 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 wah, yeah. that wah wah thing that I really liked. You also had another moment just to remind us that whatever that low bass monster is <laughs> is still there. It sounds like this. Still here. Just super subtle, super elegant. Okay, so the last little thing here is we added at the very end of this whole process these reverberations of voices in the room. They are down here at the bottom of the project and they sound like this. You are in control of the overall idea of being modulated by an electrode. Try the end of the floor. You need to take into account that, that whole, you know, what is in, may not be little green men. What we were looking for as you were looking through this room is just kind of the reverberations of teachings in the room. There's a lot of teaching that goes on in this classroom here at the Film Scoring Academy of Europe. So we wanted to kind of capture that essence. And as you're looking around in this dark, well-lit room, hopefully it kind of works. You are in control of the overall idea of being modulated by an electrode. Try the end of the floor. You need to take into account that that whole, you know, what is in, may not be little green men. There's an extra reverberation on the last one. We cranked the sand, green men, green men, green men. That's Andy Hill speaking in that moment. And then Fran comes back at the end, and then you hear my voice. Tell the filter what to do. By automating all the information, you're building a new interaction with the sound. Your ability to create impactful, High quality mock-up is among the Nobody likes to hear their own voice, you even know, if it's yeah. processed. <laughs> <laughs> Something really interesting here to point out is the melodic content due to the accents we have, uh, natural accents we have uh, in, in this case in English, that have been produced naturally and they work perfectly with the track even if we don't think about it. We were not trying to sing a melody, so to speak, so it's just really interesting. Yeah, totally. Lots of reverb, there's band passes on these, so we lose the highs, we lose the lows, it's just the center. It makes it much more difficult to understand what they're saying, especially in the context of the track. We didn't really want you to be able to hear what we were saying, except for when Andy said, it might not be little green men, green mm -hmm. men, green men. It might not be little green men. A long echo on that. So that's kind of a pretty good dissection of this whole track. What we'll do now is just play it again for you. Okay, so that's it. We hope you enjoyed this. It's just kind of our thing, uh, just our process. Gives you a glimpse into the way that our minds work and our collaborative process works. I'll say that maybe in wrapping here that I, I love working with somebody like Fran because we have complementary skill sets. What I do is not what he does and what he does is not what I do. And when those two worlds combine and we have a really great collaborative relationship and we trust each other, yeah. We hear it when somebody says, you should stop that, or you should change that, or we should go in this direction. We just It just works because we've known each other for a long time and we trust each other. And as a result, we can get through these projects pretty seamlessly with no fights, 
Nobody cried. Well, two fights. Two fights. Yeah. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> and we come up with a pretty cool product. We hope you agree. And if not, well, we did our best. See ya. Sayonara from us at the Film Scoring Academy of Europe. Ciao.